a once peaceful city now stands in ruin, filled with the stench of the evil god, Bios. The people have lost all of their dreams, all of their hopes. Well, never fear, these two guys have had enough of it and are going to burn the bad guys with their aura. <laughs> Seriously, that's what it says. I mean, <laughs> Forgotten Worlds was originally an arcade shooter released by Capcom. It is notable for having a unique analog roll switch that could be used to spin your character and satellite around. It was ported to various platforms here and there, including the Mega Drive slash Genesis. I remember renting this version as a kid and beating it over a weekend. Anyway, it also made it onto the TurboGrafx Super CD via NEC Avenue in 1992 and it's a pretty faithful arcade conversion. After spinning up the disc, you have an option screen allowing you to adjust the number of lives, player difficulty level, language, and more. You can even turn on auto shot so you won't need to hold down the fire button the entire game. After selecting start, you get a choice from two different players. One has an automatic rifle, and one has a short range wider shot. And then, well, away we go. Forgotten Worlds is a typical shooter where you fly from left to right, sometimes bottom to top, destroying all enemies in sight. There are nine levels here, so it will take a while to get through it. The direction key moves the player around the screen. Holding down button 2 fires unless you change to auto shot and is automatic without the need to raise up those turbo switches. Thank goodness these guys never run out of bullets. <laughs> and trust me, you're gonna need them. With that said, the game tries to emulate the original arcade's unique spinning controls. Hitting button 1 will rotate your character clockwise while the run button will rotate your character counterclockwise. It's a little awkward at first as you stretch your thumb to the run button and back. In Japan, they had a pack-in with this game which included the Avenue 3 pad making things a bit easier. But in America, we had just the standard controller. You know, it is weird, but after a while, you'll just do it and it starts to click. You also have a satellite alongside that both fires and blocks enemy attacks. This satellite rotates along with you, but if you let go of the fire button, you can position it wherever you like. This positioning plays a big role in maximizing the satellite's attack as well as its shielding functionality. You also have a Mega Crash, which will destroy bullets and some opponents by double tapping button 2. But be warned, it will drain a little of your health. You collect blue coins of various sizes called Zennies as you defeat enemies, bosses, or reveal them hidden around. You'll need these Zennies to purchase items at the shop. Speaking of, the shop appears out of nowhere, duh, and offers up some goodies. The items change as the game goes on, and choosing which to purchase at which time is extremely important in defeating this game. Along the way, you also have bonus items scattered about that offer points, zennies, energy replenishment, or even a free protector slash armor. Take note of where these items are, especially the armor and energy, so you don't need to spend money on those at the shop. The enemies you'll encounter are very unique and somewhat bizarre. But don't let that fool you, as they are relentless, not only in their speed, but in sheer amount of available bullets. In fact, compared to the Genesis port, the TurboGrafx version seems to have more firepower abound as a whole. It also retains all of the arcade levels and bosses, which is a great thing. Speaking of bosses, they are all unique, large, have different patterns, and, well, some are a pushover based on what weapon you have. This guy I couldn't do squat with because, well, he's impervious to lasers. Until I got the flamethrower, that is. 
The final boss is also a pain, without proper placement and a little luck. The stages are all definitely otherworldly and range from this, to this, to this. Visually, this Super CD is quite faithful to its arcade counterparts. It looks pretty good, and if they only found a way to sneak in some multi-scrolling backgrounds, it would be close to perfect. The enemies and bosses are pretty detailed of a good size, and each stage has a unique look. A tiny bit of flicker and slowdown along with the boring still shots between stages don't detract from the game being graphically sound. The music has been redone in that CD quality Red Book Audio way, and it is excellent. There are a few solid sound effects here and there, but most of them are overshadowed by the music. And the speech is, well, quite laughably bad. <laughs> but then again, the text accompanying it isn't much better. I'll you today for sure. Yeah. We discussed the controls already, and while I wouldn't say they ever feel amazingly perfect, the game does a good job trying to pay tribute to the arcade's original control scheme. It will take a while to get used to, and you may spin the wrong way as you get the hang of it, but I think the control variation makes Forgotten Worlds a unique experience. You are given a few lives, and even though the game keeps track of score, there are no extra lives awarded, so buying the resurrection potion is a thing here. <laughs> when you die, you start right where you left off. If you use one of your few available continues, poof, it's back to the beginning of the stage. Forgotten Worlds is a pretty good shooter and definitely a faithful arcade translation. But honestly, this version of the game always felt a little unpolished to me at times. The weird fade to black before a boss while you're still in the middle of a battle is, well, weird. You also have no life counter on the main screen and variable loading times with a few that seem a titch too long. There also is no multiplayer option like in the arcade except for a special code you can input to allow a friend to control the satellite. And well, that's actually kind of cool. With all that said, the game will need to click for you, and once, or if it does, I think you'll enjoy the experience. You need patience to figure out enemy and boss patterns, become comfortable with the game's spinny controls, select the right paths to go, and even maximize zennies to purchase items, especially that tracking laser. It's awesome. It's not the easiest shooter, so when you finally clear this one, it's time to celebrate. Forgotten Worlds isn't my favorite shooter on the Turbo Graphics, but its unique controls bizarre environments and characters, and arcade faithfulness make it a recommend. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some aura I need to burn some folks with. <laughs> <laughs>